Welcome back to the technical architecture series. Today we're talking about event streaming. Let's imagine you have multiple microservices, right? And this is usually the case where you would use event streaming, where you would even think of using event streaming. You wouldn't do it in a monolith service or in a small uh, project. So this, let's say this kind of an architecture has evolved over the past three to four years where now the company has so much traffic, so many people coming in, so many or orders that are happening that they have divided their project into multiple microservices and they have a separate users microservice, separate products microservice. It's an e-commerce platform, let's assume. And their users are being stored and managed in a separate place. Their products are being managed and stored in a separate place so that they have separate teams. So there's a op product ops team that uploads new products and removes the inventory and all of that. There's a users management team that does all the legal, all the, all the operations, all of the uh, person, privacy, all of those th those things can be done here. And then there's a cart microservice and the cart microservice done, then has multiple more types of microservices or logic that's happening in the microservice. That's something like cart abandonment or, or sending emails to people who didn't end up buying. And then there's a payment microservice. There's a whole legal team and a whole operations team here, which are coordinating with the banks, which are uh, <clears throat> checking about cart declines and all of those things. Then there's the invoice microservice, which uh, gets events from let's say the payment microservice or I won't use the word events now because we have not started talking about that but I would say that it, it's dependent on the payment microservice because only when the payment goes through you would need the invoice microservice to send them the invoice and only when somebody puts something in the cart and buys it then you would need the payment microservice and there would again be one more which is the order microservice I have not drawn it here but but then you get the idea right you get the idea that there will be multiple uh, different divisions for each business logic layer and so there will be one tracking microservice for tracking the orders then there will be referrals coupons microservice now the thing is they all need each other so for example the cart microservices needs products data the products microservice needs users data to know which user is viewing which product and the cart microservice actually needs both the product and users micro data, uh, microservice data because it wants which products have been added by which users similarly payment uh, has been made by which particular user right so we'll keep drawing all these things the payment has been made by which particular user and product microservice uh, has a dependency here then uh, users also have a dependency here and then users have a dependency in the payment as we have already discussed that have a dependency here as well and the, the invoices have a dependency here the tracking has a dependency here and, and probably for the user not, not here really I think here and then uh, one for the user and then the referrals obviously has one for the user and also the payments sometimes because maybe you get paid based on referrals. So you can see what's happening here is that there are multiple dependencies uh, in the business logic between these teams uh, and these business uh, departments. And what's also happening is that between these microservices, there's uh, no way to communicate. Probably the only way to communicate is calling these APIs. So the user microservices calls the cart microservice APIs this calls this API. So this is very synchronous. So whenever you need some data, you get the data. And what happens is in this kind of a microservice uh, architecture, when it grows, it becomes this. It's called as the famous ball of mud architecture where each microservice is calling each other. And it's very, very difficult to manage and maintain. This is uh, an engineer's nightmare or DevOps guy's nightmare. You don't want to end up here. Uh, and But many companies do end up here because they don't know about, they've not probably uh, studied a lot of <laughs> architecture. And they end up here. And this is where the entire field of event streaming and event-based architecture comes in from because everybody finds themselves here as the company grows. But if they only knew a little bit better, they would know that they could stream events. And for this, it requires a lot of engineering heavy lift in the beginning because you have to change the way or the behavior of each of the microservices themselves because the microservices now need to be able to publish events to a, a central stream, let's say, let's call it the event streaming service. And then the microservices also need to be able to consume the events and take some actions. Okay. So that means, let's say the cart microservice publishes an event that, hey, this user has uh, put these five products in his cart. He will publish the, this microservice will publish those events here. And any microservice can pick up those events, any microservice. But in, in our case, let's assume that the invoice microservice is picking up those events. Is They're able to consume the events and then they're able to take some action. So this is called as publisher, consumer, and there are multiple ways to do this. This is called as uh, being triggered by, by some event, right? So there are multiple nuances to this. This is a huge, huge actually field 
uh, it's 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 a uh, it's a big topic actually event streaming and event based architecture and i'll cover all of that in detail so you don't have to worry and even if you don't understand this right now and you just get like the gist of it that's completely all right at least you know that you don't want to end up here and you want to have ideally a way to stream the data so streaming basically makes things asynchronous for us so stream looks actually if you dig down deeper stream would look something like this in this in this rectangular there would be multiple small boxes which would be events which are separate events flowing in that stream and the reason to stream something is because you don't want to um, transition the data between these microservices in one big lump so let's say i have the past few invoices in the past 15 minutes maybe the 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 e-commerce platform is doing really well and there are 1000 invoices in the past uh, 15 minutes so you want you don't want to move all of those with an api through an api right because that's a lot of data to be moving through an api so that's why what you do is you just stream these uh this data and it becomes easier because it's smaller chunks of data and it's always flowing through the system and you can do a lot more things because there are multiple technologies that help us do this and there are multiple patterns that help us move data between these microservices very efficiently i'm just showing you in just that there's just one central stream but it doesn't have to be there, there can be multiple streams connecting different microservices there can be uh, a lot of replication in these streams happening so that even if one stream goes down there can be others that take the place so we won't get into that right now what we'll, we'll just discuss is event driven architecture and event streaming this is how it works this is what it is this is the practical application and if you want to dig down deeper into this field into this topic there's a lot of content out there but i'll be covering all of that on my on in this actual series uh, in the next few videos as well so thanks a lot for watching guys um, do let me know in the comments below what kind of videos would you like to see more in this series we'll cover all of the topics that we're talking about but we'll also try to cover more if you have some particular questions or doubts make sure you subscribe to this channel because you'll get awesome content like this because i'll be posting more of this content more often and make sure you like this video because that it helps the youtube algorithm to serve it to more people share and comment share the people actually who who you think need people who are your teammates your colleagues or people who've joined your company recently and you think they can really benefit from this topic do share it with them thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video